day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I see some familiar faces. How are y'all doing? <laughs> you made it through Thanksgiving and you're here. Okay, this is awesome. Uh, I'd like to welcome you to worship here at Johns Creek Presbyterian Church the first Sunday after Thanksgiving and the last Sunday before Advent. So we're in a sweet spot in the year and it's good to be together to worship. Uh, our ritual practice is there's a pew um, welcome pad. If you'll sign that and pass it down, we'll know who's uh, worshiping here today. You probably know uh, most of each other. Hey, Spencer. <laughs> Always call out the last guy in, right? <laughs> He's my liturgist, so I just, <laughs> it's good to see you. Yeah, okay. And, um, and, and then we'll know, okay. Uh, I have a couple announcements. Uh, good news, you probably have read about this, is that there's going to be a congregational meeting on Sunday the 10th. That's not next Sunday, but the following Sunday. And the purpose of that meeting is to vote on uh, a new senior pastor. The uh, pastor nominating committee who should uh, be uh, not only in your prayers of uh, continued prayers, but in Thanksgiving, all the hard work that they put in the year plus, it's quite a task. And they've identified a person who uh, is excited to be here. So make sure uh, you be, uh, you will read uh, the announcements and what comes out every week, uh, every day of the week, so that you know uh, when that uh, meeting's gonna be on the 10th, okay? Uh, also, I've been asked to announce that the Salvation Army uh, Angels, I think there's three left, and it, it's in the breezeway. Uh, if you want to get one of those um, Salvation Army uh, Angel. Angels, that'll help out a little kid. That's all the announcements that I have, and um, so let us worship God. <laughs> God's word, the foundation on which all life begins. Praise, Praise the Lord for the creative word. Through Jesus Christ, God's living word, our lives are redeemed and we are called to a new way of life. Praise, Praise God for the redemptive word. The word of the Lord is a lamp unto our feet, lighting the way along our spiritual walk together. Praise God's guiding light which shines brightly in our lives when we listen to God's word. Praise the Lord. The Lord's name be praised.
time of confession with sincere and repentant hearts, let us name our sins against Christ and one another. Let us pray. Create in us a clean heart, O Lord, for we have strayed from your will. By your word, you created us in your image, yet we use our words in harmful ways. You call us to be peacemakers, and instead we use words to cause division and strife. Often we speak too quickly, too negatively, and too opinionatedly before we truly listen to the views of others. Rather than speaking kind words that sow compassion and concern, we spread rumors, falsehoods, and accusations that promote hatred and divide. Forgive us, Lord, for our misuse of words and shine your light brightly in our lives once again so that we will see the error of our ways and learn to use our words to reflect your glory as demonstrated in the life of Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. However long we wander, however far we stray, God's steadfast love endures forever. Sisters and brothers, be assured, in Jesus Christ, our sins are forgiven. Thanks be to God. At this time, we will pass our peace, so the peace of Christ be with you, and also with you. What a wonderful blessing. For scripture reading today, oh, I'm sorry, please be seated. <laughs> Our first scripture reading comes from the book of Numbers. I'll be reading Numbers chapter 6, verses 24 through 26. I invite you all to follow along with me using the words printed in your bulletins. Let us listen for God's word to us this morning. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. <laughs> The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace.
So the blessing goes back and forth. When you're blessed, you're a blessing. And when you are a blessing, you're blessed. Does that make sense to you? So we're in this time of blessing, and we're going to focus on that today. So let's bow our heads and pray. <coughs> Gracious God, we thank you for the gift of Jesus, who is your ultimate blessing for us. And we're told that we should love you and love our neighbor as ourselves. So let us always continue to practice blessing each other. And by doing so, we will see your face in the face of the people that we bless. We pray this in Christ's name. Amen. Thank you, guys. Uh, you can go back either to your seats or Miss Dawn will take you to children's worship. I started getting choked up with those little ornaments. <coughs> Our second lesson today is a reading from uh, the letter to the Philippians in the second chapter, Paul's uh, love letter, if you will, to the Philippians. He's really speaking about how we should bless people in our lives. He's not using that language per se, but I want you to hear the scripture lesson through the filter of blessing, God's blessing of us and how we're to keep in mind to constantly be blessing those people God places in our lives. Listen to God's word. If then there is any comfort in Christ, any consolation from love, any partnership in the spirit, any tender affection and sympathy, make my joy complete. Be of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Do nothing from selfish ambition or empty conceit, but in humility regard others as better than yourselves. Let each of you look not to your own interest, but to the interest of others. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he existed in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be grasped, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, assuming human likeness. And being found in appearance as a human, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death even death on a cross. Therefore, God exalted him even more highly and gave him the name that is above every other name so that, in, so that at the name given to Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under earth. And every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.
Please be seated. I tell you, I feel a little out of balance. They've got this mark I've got to stand over here, and I've got like 30 plus years of experience standing here. <laughs> I don't know, guys. I don't know how long I can do that. <laughs> it is wonderful to be here with you this morning to share in worship. Uh, this great celebration following Thanksgiving. And in, in a kind of celebratory spirit, I thought it'd be fun to start today with a riddle. You ready for a riddle? Yeah. Okay. What do a king, a blessing, and children have in common? What do a king, blessing, and children have in common? Anybody want to shout one out? Seeing no takers, I'll tell you. Obviously, it's, it's the sermon. We're going to talk about it in the sermon. Okay, so that was pretty obvious. Like the first, the first ingredient, there's three ingredients, right? Is um, there was a, a blessing. Spencer read the blessing out of Numbers. There was a king. Jesus is Lord. That's the king. And... The children, we had some children, but that's going to be folded into the sermon, so you've got to hang on and see how it all comes together through kids, okay? Blessing, king, and kids. All right, so this morning, then, I'm going to add, follow up a riddle. The kids got to go back to school. You guys don't, but they do, with a pop quiz. All right, here's the pop quiz. Based on a Christian liturgical year, what, or rather whom, should I say, are we commemorating in worship this morning? Did you read your bulletins? Christ the King, for those that read their bulletins. Excellent. That's right. It's Christ the King. Now, when I was in seminary, we had to study the uh, intellectual church reformer named John Calvin, and he had what were called the uh, Institutes of the Christian Religion. They were big volumes. We had to read them all, right? And in those big volumes, I remember three things. He told us how to think about the person of Christ, the offices that Christ or roles that he held. And they were these three. Christ the prophet, Christ the priest, and Christ the king. So today is Christ the King Sunday, and we are going to be celebrating Jesus as King, or as Paul says, Jesus as Lord, because that was the language of his time. Now, on this Christ the King Sunday, we can ask then the question, what type of king is Jesus? Now, notice I'm saying is rather than was, because we profess that Jesus Christ ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. We'll say that in the creed later, right? So Christ is King, Lord. We're going to use those two terms interchangeably. To answer the question, what type of king that Jesus is, we look to Paul's letter, the second chapter in Philippians. Certainly, Paul was contrasting Jesus' lordship with that of Caesar's being Caesar. And Christians of his time would really want to know what kind of king then is this Jesus? Is he like Caesar who looks down upon the subjects from his high throne and he either gives them thumbs up or gives them thumbs down? Was he that kind of leader or king or lord? Or People in our day and time, we don't experience that so much, but was he more of an autocratic dictator that subjugates his people, you know, that you just got to do what he says? Is he that kind of king? When you read, read in Paul, you hear no, but Jesus is the type of Lord 
that he is raised above all powers and principalities, and he's actually rules over all the universe. So he's got the power, but he doesn't rule like human beings do. Paul would argue that Jesus isn't that type of king at all. Rather, he is one who was in the form of God, but he emptied himself out and became a servant or slave to become one of us in life, to walk among us. So he, Paul, declares Jesus, the Lord or King, in a divinely different way than human beings who play God and look down on those who they subjugate, not allowing common folks to look them face to face and certainly not eye to eye. Rather, our Jesus, our King, our Lord, came in the lowly form of a human being just like us. Back in his days, kings and Caesars were God to the people, but they could never look face to face. But rather, our servant, our slave Jesus, came to us with humility, sacrificial love, and a type of neighborly concern that looks after the well-being of those all around us. In other words, he came into the world to rule not through selfish concern, as Paul says, but through blessing. Think about that with me, will you? When Paul declares that every knee shall bow to confess Jesus as Lord, he is proclaiming Jesus the King is the one who meets us face to face on bended knee, who looks us eye in eye and connects on a profoundly, deeply human level to say, I see you and you are ultimately important to me. He's not even in the same ballpark as the Caesar who lords over because Jesus is Christ the King of blessing. The blessing that lifts up you and I. The blessing that gives us power and strength to live our lives. I had an example of this last a couple weeks ago now when I was at an elementary school celebrating thanks, thankfulness, and it was for parents and grandfriends. I am a grandfriend. And the first grader sang a song I think the Apostle Paul himself would have sung to the <coughs> Philippian church when he was talking about Jesus being a king and meeting us on bended knee. The first graders confidently and proudly, I might add very proudly, <laughs> sang this song and it chorus went like this, and now let the weak say I am strong, and the poor say I am rich, because what Jesus has done, give thanks, give thanks, give thanks indeed. It, it, it makes a kind of ritual sense, doesn't it, that we would celebrate then Christ the King during this time of year with thanksgiving when we count our blessings and give thanks with a grateful heart because the weak are made strong and the poor are made rich. That's the act of blessing, which I should say should be a lifelong practice, not a one-time thing when we bless somebody. We do that ritually. But every day in our lives with the people that God places before us, because have you ever thought of this? We oftentimes say, God put somebody in our lives, right? How often times do we start, God put me in their life? They needed me. I needed them. It's a good way to think, because that's what the practice of blessing has us do. Whenever we gather and worship, we always bless. It's at the center of our faith. At the end of our service, we always have a benediction. It's a way of helping us go out in the world and into our lives, our weekly lives, blessed. Spencer read from the book of Numbers. And it's this kind of blessing that God brings to us on bended knee, face to face. And it goes like this. The Lord bless you and keep you. 
The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance and give you peace. Doesn't that make your heart still? Doesn't it make your weak heart strong? Doesn't it make your poor heart rich? Think of wonderful blessing with me. Open our minds to that awful, awe-filled blessing God has given us in Christ our King, who looks at us face to face and shines God's love on us in our good times and in our bad, shines God's grace on us in our sickness as well as our health, shines God's peace on us in our comings and goings so that we may be strong in the life that we live. That is what it means, my friends, when Paul says, have this mind, share this mind together, have one mind that confers peace wherever you go, that confers power to those who need to feel empowered. To see God face to face and experience that uplifting countenance. We don't use that word anymore, do we? But it's an old word for a face. It actually, when you get in deeper into Hebrew, it means being ever present and surrounding us. To lift that up for us. And that's what our servant Jesus, who is our King and our Lord, does in our daily lives. So now, of course, it's time to bring some children into the story. Because oftentimes it's kids that can really help us understand God. No wonder Jesus said, let the little children come to me, right? Lisa, listen close, because these are two preschool stories, okay? Lisa Lucas, who, uh, one of our gems, and has, has overseen thousands of preschoolers helping ra be raised by this church. Well, like I said, it's, we've had thousands of preschoolers. Now, I have been blessed because I've been part of a counseling ministry at this church for over 30 years now. And every morning during the week, during the school year, I get to see preschoolers. And I see them beginning in September, and they look at me like, who's that big man? <laughs> They're scared, right? And a few of them want to catch my eye. They want me to look at them face to face with my eyes. And then they start to warm up. And by the end of the year, come April or May, they're all running to the fence when uh, Mr. Neal or Reverend Neal comes out of his office, because I'm like this, where's this guy come from, dude, right? <laughs> and then he disappears back in the office. Well, one day I came out, and it was earlier in the school year, and there was this little boy, he was maybe three or four, I couldn't guess where he was at, not quite four probably. He was crying inconsolably, and it just really got to my heart. And so I walked into the teachers, and they said, he's scared. There's workmen over there uh, repairing some steps to the back of the house. And you could hear their, their equipment was very loud and noisy. They couldn't help it. And he's crying, I want mommy, I want mommy. And you guys know what that means, right? This is trouble. He's feeling very weak. Well, I wasn't his mommy, and I can't pretend to be a mommy. But I am a daddy. And so I reached into my old dad bag that I carry along with me, and I thought, okay, I need to get on his level. So I got down on his level, and he told me he was scared. And so I thought I better explain to him what's going on and that it would be happening for a little while longer. We talked about the noise of the equipment. That didn't help. <laughs> it, the first try never helps, does it? So then I think, okay, I gotta go into my magic trick here, right? My magic bag. So I started talking to him, I said, that's my office right there, because he sees me come out of there. I said, you see me come out of the office? I said, yeah, I said, that's where I work. I said, I can do a magic trick. Would you like to see a magic trick? He says, yeah. 
He's still crying, but not so much. Notice, good parenting is always about distraction, right? <laughs> Don't pay attention to what's going on over here. Anyway, I've got a, a, a walkway that goes into the waiting room, then through my office, so people can come in the, the, the entry to the waiting room and then leave at the office, and the kids see at the end of the office. So I, I'm going to walk into my office, but then I'm going to reappear. So I disappeared into the office. I walked around, went out the waiting room, came around. I said, ta-da! He says, oh. I said, I can do it again, but I can do it backwards. <laughs> Kids love backwards. <laughs> None of you are backwards. No, <laughs> I didn't say that, did I? Okay, anyway, so I, I did it in reverse. And he looks at me and he says, it's magic. <laughs> I said, I got him, right? I said, it is magic. I said, every day you can get to see me go in there and I'll be gone, but I'll come back and you can see me again. See what I'm doing with his mom? I'm not his mom. His mom left him, but she comes back. So I'm, I'm setting that up, all right? Well, the story doesn't end there. I, I felt great. The preschool teachers are going, oh, thank you. We couldn't get him calmed down. And, um, but you know what started happening? Every day he looks for me, every day. And I come out of my office and he yells, I didn't cry today. <laughs> I said, I'm so proud of you. And we have a little chat, and we've learned a lot about each other. That little boy has become a blessing in my life that I look forward to each day. And if I don't get it, I kind of miss it, right? It's magic. But we could also say it's a miracle. Because it's really God working through us so that the weak say they are strong and the poor say they are rich. Oh, give God thanks with a grateful heart. You with me? He greets me every day in his own way by saying, I didn't cry today. I was weak and now I'm strong. Now, another encounter I had recently with preschoolers started out much differently because they were not scared of me, but rather they were playing in, or they weren't scared or scared of me at that moment, but they were playing in a way that was actually creating a safety hazard. Um, so I had to become mean old Reverend Neal for a moment, right? Here's this big dude coming out, right? And they're, they're playing in the dirt. Now, kids play in the dirt. There was nothing wrong with that, but what they were doing is they were throwing on a sidewalk. Anybody in building and grounds and stuff are going to go, hey, this is a risk issue. And it was. It was right where a lot of people walk, and they could easily slip. So I said, i got to say something. I walked up to those boys, and there was a mom there. And I said, basically, guys, you can't put dirt on the sidewalk. It's a, it's a risk. And um, I said, there's people, then they walk by. They could slip and fall. They could break a bone. Okay, we won't do it, all right? And so they left, and then I became scary Reverend Neal for a little bit, obviously. I went home, and I got my, my blower, and I went and I blew off the sidewalk so it wasn't a wrist problem anymore. And um, I thought that was that. Well, a few days later, they were playing after school, and they were up in the top of the slide, and one of the boys looks out at me and smiles and says, I didn't throw dirt again. <laughs> and I told him how proud I was of him, uh, and I let that be that. Well, a little bit later, I walk out, and these two boys walk up, and they got their hoodies on pulled over their heads, and they walk up to me, and they said, we're playing bad guys. <laughs> I kind of got it, right? What goes around comes around. And uh, it was, I think it was like the playground version of where the wild things get, are, you know? <laughs> and um, we talked about that a little bit, but they wanted, to, they wanted to converse with me, so I thought I better get on their level. We talked about how they were playing and such, right? And so they asked me about myself, and I said, well, I work here, and that, that's my office. They said, that's your office? 
I said, yeah, you want to look inside? And I said to the parents, is it okay if they go in? They said, well, they can just look. And I said, perfect. You never invite a kid into your office without parent approval. And they come and look, and I'm telling them all about my office. And I don't say much what I do. I just talk about the office. And, and um, one of the boys says, well, where's your table? <laughs> and I, it didn't compute. I said, what, what do you mean table? He says, where's your table that you eat on? Because it's a house, right? Kids are still concrete thinkers. Oh, I said, well, you know, I don't eat here. You don't? No, I said, I only live a couple miles away. I drive home for lunch, and then I come back. They said, you do? I said, yeah. I said, you know, I've been doing that for 30 years now. I've been working here 30 years. They said, 30 years? Now wait for it. Here it comes. And one boy looks at me, and he says, does that, does that mean, do you still celebrate birthdays? Do you still have birthdays? <laughs> I about bust the gut. <laughs> now, here, here's something that, that, that was part of the blessing of that, right? Is I was having a, 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 a pretty tough day. I was in a low mood. I, my energy was low. And that belly chuckle brought my soul back to online. And sharing that with these boys who thought I was this big, mean, looking down kind of guy, overlord was right down on their level and understood the importance of play and also being able to share some things to where they're coming from. And I tell you, I was the weak who felt strong. I was the poor in mood that became rich. And I gave thanks to God and I'm sharing that thanks because these are the surprises and the wonders that go on every day of the week during the school year here at JCPC. And it is invaluable ministry that you all have played in this community for 30 plus years, even before the church was founded with Chris Horn. And I still hope I have many more birthdays to come. <laughs> Friends, let me ask you this. Do you want a miracle in your life? Do you yearn to experience the presence of the Lord who lifts up his face and shines upon you? Well, then all you have to do is look around you for the people that God has put in your life who are waiting for you to see them on their level so they can see you on your level because God has put us into each other's lives for this purpose so that we can truly, humbly serve through sacrificial love and neighborly concern. And when that happens, miracles occur because the weak say, I am strong. The poor say, I am rich. Give thanks to God. <coughs> yes, indeed, always give thanks to God. And may all the children of God say, amen. amen. So we, we, you guys turn things around on me a little bit the way you do worship, so I gotta make sure I'm following correctly. Now is our time for our prayer. <laughs> Having heard the word of God, now let us turn our hearts, minds, our very souls to God in prayer. Join me in prayer, please. Gracious and loving Father, we offer you thanks and praise on this Christ the King Sunday. A few days ago, our tables were filled with family, friends, food, and good cheer. We want to thank you for the fullness of our lives because the truth is that when we count our blessings, we become aware of your ever-present grace and glory that surrounds our lives. Scripture tells us that you sent your only son to become one of us. And though he counted equally with you, our father, he emptied himself so that through your spirit, 
we can experience the wonder of the gospel truth that nothing separates us from your love. Nothing in our lives goes uncounted. Everything matters. So for the good that constantly weaves throughout our lives, we give you thanks. For the hurt, the illnesses, the broken relationships we've experienced, we ask for your Holy Spirit, our comfort in, to bring healing and peace into our lives. Into our world, we say there is so much death and destruction, O oh Lord, and sometimes we wonder if the bombs and bullets, the crying babies and the grief-stricken families who cry out in agony, we wonder if their chaos and the hatred that goes on around us, we wonder if it will ever be defeated defeated in a way that peace once more rules the day. So in the name of Jesus, our Prince of Peace, who emptied himself out and died on the cross to overcome death, free us from its power, free us from death's power, we pray in Jesus' name, that his peace will rule, that lions will lay down with lambs, and that a peaceable kingdom will become a reality in our lives. And as it does, suffering will end and those who have been hurting will find comfort and hope. Lord, hear us as we pray now in a silent moment. Listen to us as we say our special prayers to you, whispering in your ear what we need and what we desire. And for all these prayers, we give you thanks and praise that you are our God and that you hear us. And now hear us as we pray together our Lord's Prayer by praying. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. At this time, we'll receive our offering. And as we give, in your heart, say a special thank you prayer for the many blessings that God has bestowed upon you and will continue to grant.
join me in the prayer de dedication in our bulletin. God of unending gifts, we praise you for your abundant goodness. As you are generous, we want to be generous too. May the gifts we bring extend your generosity into the world so that all people may be made whole by your goodness and grace. Amen. And now let us pray together the affirmation of faith, the Apostle Creed, that holds us all together, one to another, no matter how different we are, saying this belief together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of body, and the life everlasting. Amen. sharing your talents, sharing 
your heart and being surrounded by support that can laugh and say, you're one of us. Because when it comes down to it, that's who we are. We're one of us. But to God, that one that's brought together to be part of the us is a powerful blessing. And this is the blessing that sustains us in life. Because Christ, who did not count equality with God, though it was in the form of God, became a servant and walked amongst the people and gave blessing and said, Come to me and I will give you rest. And when you hear a shirt like that, we can laugh together. <laughs> because it all works together. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and with us, now and forever. Amen. Amen.